The Seal Book. Once again, the keeper of the book has opened the ponderous door to the secret vault, wherein is kept the great sealed book, in which is recorded all the secrets and mysteries of mankind through the ages. Here are tales of every kind, tales of murder, of madness, of dark deeds, strange and terrible beyond all belief. Keeper of the book, I would know what tale we tell this time. Open the great book and let us read. Slowly the great book opens. One by one, the keeper of the book turns the pages and stops. Ah, the strange story of a scientist who delved into the unknown with frightening results. A tale titled, Beware of Tomorrow. It is written in the pages of the sealed book. Our story begins as Sheriff Ramsey brings his car to a stop in front of an old mansion in a desolate section of New England. A young man gets out of the car and speaks to the sheriff. Thanks very much, Sheriff, for bringing me out here. That's quite all right, young fellow. Uh, say, um, do you know Professor Clark? The man that lives in this old mansion? Why, yes. I was Professor Clark's laboratory assistant back in college. Why? Well, there's been some talk in town of running him and that man of his, that Barton fellow, right out of the county. But what has anybody got against the professor? Well, there isn't a milder man in the world. Well, maybe so. But folks has got wind of what happened at the state penitentiary over in Hillvale last year. Sure, if you're talking in riddles. What did happen? The professor went over there when they hanged Richards, that hold-up killer. And the warden gave the professor the murderer's brain. So what? Folks think he's keeping that brain in a big glass jar and making it grow. (laughs) Oh, that's perfectly ridiculous. Well, I'm not saying I ever believed it. But it'd be a good idea if the professor would give folks a notion of what he's really doing in that laboratory of his with that Barton fellow to help him. Then maybe the talk would die down. I understand. All right, Sheriff, I'll mention it to him. Well, then I'll be getting on. Good night, young fellow. Good night. A few moments after Dr. Richard Dale had knocked on the door of the ancient mansion, a frail, white-haired old man answered the door. An old man who could hardly speak in his joy as he gripped Richard Dale's hand. He led the way down a long hall to a great room where strange equipment took up almost every inch of space. Retorts and electric furnaces, generators, batteries, great glass vats. Dr. Dale stared around him in intense curiosity as Professor Clark helped him off with his hat and coat. There. Now sit down, Dick. Sit down and let me get a look at you. I got your letter and it made me so curious I took the first train. You promised me a surprise. Is this it? This amazing laboratory? (laughs) No, no, my boy. We'll come to that in a moment. After you've met Barton, my assistant. Oh, uh, Barton. 
Yes, Professor? Dr. Dale has arrived. I want you to meet him. Why, of course. How do you do, Dr. Dale? How do you do? We've both of us been looking forward to your visit. Yes, the professor's letter made me so curious I couldn't stay away. Uh, Barton, is Alpha making some coffee? Yes, he started it when we heard the car. Alpha? Who's he? Our general man of all work. A uh, truly <coughs> amazing fellow. <coughs> yeah, here he comes now. <coughs> what in the world? <coughs> Shall Alpha serve coffee? Good heavens. I said you'd be surprised, Dick. He's not human. He's a machine, a robot. Yes, my boy. An artificial man made from metal and synthetic brain tissue. A machine man. But walking and then talking. He's not very pretty, but then the professor was mostly interested in making sure he'd work. Well, he must weigh a ton. No, only about 300 pounds. You see, Alpha is mostly aluminum and never light alloys. Inside his aluminum plates are some new batteries I've devised, together with miles of fine silver wire and a dozen electric motors, to give you only the highlights. Shall Alpha serve coffee now? Yes, Alpha. Put it on this table here and pour a cup for Dr. Dale. Alpha, do so. I still can't make myself believe it. Alpha for coffee. Go on, Dick. Take it. Oh, oh yes, of course. Thank you. Well, he looks clumsy, but he poured the coffee as well as a man could. Yes, my boy. Alpha has capabilities you'd never suspect to look at him. Uh, we won't need you any more tonight, Alpha. You can go back to your room now. Alpha goes. <coughs> Be sure to switch off your batteries. They're going to need recharging tomorrow. Alpha, understand. Well, that's the most incredible thing I ever saw. You see, Dick, like any machine, he's completely inactive when his batteries have been switched off. But his brain continues to function. It's an artificial protoplasm that I spent eight years creating. It's the only thing that makes him different from any other machine. But it means that Alpha can think. Think like a man. A machine that can walk and talk and, and think. But Alpha isn't the only surprise I have for you, Dick. He's not? No. I have another one, even more astonishing. But you'll have to wait until morning to learn what that is. Uh, Barton will show you to your room, Dick. Of course, Professor. I'll see you in the morning, then. Yes. We'll have a long talk tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Professor Clark. Oh, Dr. Dale. Yes, Barton? But could we talk for a minute before I show you to your room? Why, well, yes, of course. It occurs to me that the professor forgot to tell you why he asked you here. It was his hope that you'd stay indefinitely and help us carry forward the work we've been doing here. Stay indefinitely? Why, oh, I have my own work. Now, don't say no yet. Just think, Dr. Dale... Alpha is stronger and more rugged than a man. He needs no rest, no food. Yet he can do the work of three men. He can plow, reap, run machinery. Think how much drudgery a million like him could lift from mankind's shoulders. Yes. Yes, that's true. And already Alpha is technically old-fashioned. Professor Clark has blueprints for a new machine man, as superior to Alpha as an aeroplane is to a bicycle. We want you to help us build them. Well, I'm certainly tempted to stay. Perhaps I could arrange it. Good. Then I'll show you to your room now, if you wish. Yes, I, I am sleepy. If you'll just come this way. His mind in a whirl of amazement, Dr. Dale retired and finally fell into an uneasy sleep. How long he had slept, he did not know, when abruptly he woke with a scream ringing in his ears. The cry came from downstairs. Dr. Dale leaped from his bed and raced down to the lower hall. In the lower hall, he found Barton hammering on the heavy door of the laboratory. Professor Clark. Professor Clark, what's wrong? Barton, what's happened? Professor Clark, I heard him call for help. The door is locked. We've got to break it down. Yes, come, put your shoulder beside mine. Right. Are you ready? ready? Then shove. Oh, once again. All right, once more. 
Professor Clark, where are you? Professor Clark. He's not here. Yes. Yes, he's here. Lying on the floor beside the window. He's been murdered. It was Alpha. It must have been. No one else could have done it. Where is Alpha? The window, it's open. He went out that way. We've got to go after him. I'm afraid it's hopeless. At night in these woods, we couldn't possibly find him. No. No, you're right, of course. It'll be morning soon. Then I think he'll come back. He knows that he can only go for a few more hours before his batteries must be recharged. But why, and why did he kill the man who created him? The professor has been thinking of destroying Alpha because he's now technically out of date. Perhaps that's the reason Alpha killed him. Oh, poor Professor Clark. We'll have to notify the police. That is only the sheriff. In any case, I think we should wait until morning and then report the professor's death as an accident. An accident? Yes. If the authorities learn the truth, our research may be stopped. And when Professor Clark has achieved so much, can we let it go for nothing? Why, no. No, of course not. Dr. Hale, we must carry on his work for him. Yes, that's what he would want. Then you will help me to continue it? You'll stay? Yes. Yes, I'll stay. <laughs> To continue the story, beware of tomorrow, as it is written in the sealed book. Greatly upset by Professor Clark's tragic death, Dr. Dale returned to bed and at last fell again into an uneasy sleep, a sleep in which he was haunted by dreams of Alpha, the metal monster Professor Clark had created. When he awoke, the sun was shining and he could hear Barton moving about downstairs, he dressed and went down to find Barton getting breakfast ready. Ah, good morning, Dr. Dale. Good morning, Barton. Any sign of Alpha? Not yet. I thought that while you ate, I might outline some of the problems facing us. Yes, that's a good idea. You see, though Alpha's brain is of synthetic protoplasm, it is not completely artificial. I was wondering about that. Sheriff Ramsey mentioned that the professor had secured a human brain from... From an executed killer, yes. The professor found that to give life to his artificial brain tissue, it was necessary to add a small amount of tissue from a real brain. I see. The real tissue gave life to the rest, of course. Yes, but in this instance, it may have tainted Alpha's brain with a murderous impulse of a killer. Mm, that sounds perfectly plausible. So our first problem will be to obtain untainted brain tissues to blend with the artificial tissues we will make according to the professor's formula. Well, that should give us no trouble. I can get what we need through the research laboratories with which I'm connected. Then that solves our worst problem. The rest will be matters of detail. Fortunately, there is enough equipment here to build a dozen or so robots. Like Alpha, you mean? No, indeed. The far more advanced type Professor Clark was perfecting. Oh, uh, if you finished your breakfast, I have something to show you. Yes, I'm through. 
I don't feel much like eating after last night. Then come with me to the laboratory, and I'll show you the second surprise that Professor Clark had in store for you. Ah, here we are. Now, what I'm going to show you is in this box. Not... not another robot. Yes. A second mechanical man the professor built a few months ago. This one, though, was a failure. You mean it wouldn't work? It worked too well. I don't follow you. It was too intelligent. Professor Clark called it Beta. And Beta's brain power was greater than that of any human scientist who ever lived. But Beta was insane. <laughs> Heavens. He represented, however, a tremendous technical advance. Look. It looks exactly like a human being. Yes. Professor Clark used me for a model when he built Beta. It's an excellent likeness. Touch the face, Doctor. All right. It feels smooth and rubbery with a hard surface underneath. The surface is a new plastic Professor Clark developed with which he could imitate exactly the appearance of human skin. Underneath is an aluminum body on which the plastic was baked. I see. Beta's hair, eyes, and teeth are all artificial, too. But he walked and talked and acted so much like a human being that no man alive would have guessed his secret. No, oh, he would have fooled me completely. Did you say he was insane? From the human viewpoint, yes. He considered himself superior to the human race. With his enormous brain power, he intended to make himself ruler of the world. Oh, you're joking. Not in the least. That was why Professor Clark destroyed him just in time. He had made plans to take over this laboratory and construct dozens of mechanical men like himself. And then, with their help, he was going to enslave all mankind. But if that could happen once, it might happen again. I don't believe we should continue Professor Clark's work after all. Oh, there's no danger now, Doctor. You see, Beta also had a brain which contained tissues taken from that of the condemned murderer. But we will select the brain tissues we use from the highest types that are available. Well, in any case, we must proceed with the utmost caution. Of course, Doctor. Listen. Someone's come into the house. It's Alpha. He's come back. Alpha. We may need a weapon, but no, I can control him. Alpha. Alpha, come here. Alpha, come. Alpha, you killed Professor Clark. Why did you do it? Professor said he would destroy Alpha. And you killed him because of that? Alpha not want to be destroyed. But you... You're just a machine. What difference does it make to you? Alpha is machine that lives. Alpha stronger than you. Alpha better than you. Alpha, be quiet. We want to know where you've been. Did anyone see you? Two men saw Alpha. What do you mean? Two men driving automobiles saw him. And what did they do? They tried hit Alpha with automobile. And then what happened? Alpha stopped automobile. Alpha killed one man. Killed him? Other man ran into woods. Alpha not find him. Alpha, come back. We can't keep this a secret. No matter what happens, we must notify the authorities at once. Wait, let me think. We can't. The, the bell. There's someone at the door. I'll see who it is. You stay here. But what about Alpha? I'll switch off his batteries, and then he can't move. There. And now I'll see who's at the door. <laughs>
To continue the story, beware of tomorrow, as it is written in the sealed book. Dr. Dale waited tensely as Barton went to answer the doorbell. He heard the door open and recognized the excited voice of Sheriff Ramsey speaking. Then a moment later, Barton came back into the laboratory, followed by the sheriff, who held a revolver in his hand. But, Sheriff, if you'd only let me explain... Never mind, that. You're coming with me, both of you. The professor, too. Where is he? Professor Clark is dead, Sheriff. Dead? He was killed last night when an experiment he was engaged in went wrong. An experiment, eh? I suppose it was an experiment that crushed the life out of Jed Thompson an hour ago down the road and scared Fred Jennings so bad all he can do is jabber about monsters. It's true. The thing that killed both the professor and Thompson is an experiment. It's standing there behind you. Behind me? Go! Oh! Yeah. Man made out of machinery. Don't be alarmed, Sheriff. It's perfectly harmless now. It is a machine man which Professor Clark built. Unfortunately, it got out of control. I don't believe it. I don't blame you, Sheriff, but that's the truth. I think I can convince you. What are you doing? Stand still or I'll shoot. I'm simply going to switch off. There. Now he can move and speak as well as you or me. That thing talk? You're lying. You're up to something. Alpha. Will you tell the sheriff that it was you who killed Mr. Thompson? Alpha killed man. Man tried hit Alpha with car. Uh, so, so that's what the professor was doing all this time. Building that thing. Now, sheriff, surely you realize that we are not murderers. Oh, maybe not... But you're coming to jail just the same. You're partly responsible anyhow. But, Sheriff... Anyway, it's for your own protection. There's a mob on the way out here, and they're going to burn this place down. I've got to put you in jail for your own safety. That mob's ready to lynch you right now. Burn the place down. That's what I said. So turn that machine thing off and come along. We ain't got much time. No. All this equipment, machinery, the professor's notes, they must not be destroyed. We must stop them. Yes, Sheriff. The loss to science. Never mind science. You got your own skins to worry about. That mob means business, so let's get started. I'm afraid we can't do that, Sheriff. I've got a stick shooter here that says different. We have no choice, Barton. Oh, yes, we have. Alpha, take the gun away from this man. Alpha will do. What are you doing? Stop him. You stop him or I'll... No. No, let go of me. Let go. Stop him! Stop him! Too late, Dr. Dale. Oh, I crushed him. Yes, Dr. Dale. The sheriff is dead. Now you are a murderer. In a good cause. The life of one man or of a dozen men cannot stand in my way. You don't expect me to keep silent about this, do you? I think you will. Alpha? Alpha? He doesn't answer. His batteries have gone dead. The last burst of energy must have drained them dry. But it makes no difference. I think it does. A big difference. There. See this? Sheriff Ramsey's revolver. With three bullets still in it. Put your hands up. I must explain something to you, Doctor. You can talk. But if you move, I shall shoot. I only want to say that nothing is going to interfere with my plan to build more of the improved form of robot that Professor Clark perfected before his death. Robots who look and act so much like men, no one can detect them. They'll never be built. I intend to destroy all of Professor Clark's notes. They will be built. By me. I shall build ten, a hundred, a thousand. Then I shall lead them with their superior intelligence to the mastery of the world. Go 
gone mad. Of course, I should have guessed it. No, Doctor, that's not the answer. I shall tell you the truth. And then you must die. Stand still or I'll kill you. You remember last night when the professor said he had another surprise for you? An even greater surprise than Alpha? Yes. That surprise, Doctor, was Beta, the second robot. So perfect it looked like a man, but so intelligent that human beings were his children in comparison. But Beta was destroyed. No, Doctor. Beta was not destroyed. But you must be destroyed. Stand back. Stand back, I say. All right, then I shall shoot. And now, Doctor, your bullets are gone. You... You aren't even hurt. Bullets cannot harm me. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Beta, the second robot, was not destroyed. But I saw him. What you saw was only an initial attempt that failed. The real Beta still exists. You see, Doctor, I am Beta. You? Yes. I, too, am what you would call a mechanical man. And now, you must die. No. No. Stay away from me. Stay away. No! And so ends the tale. Beware of tomorrow. As it is written in the sealed book. Shortly after Dr. Dale's murder, a fire swept through the old mansion burning it to the ground. To this day, the ruins are avoided by the natives, for cursed is the ground where evil has dwelt. Keeper of the book, before you close the great book, show us the tale we tell next time. This one? Ah, yes. The story of a man who escaped punishment for a murder he committed, only to find that justice has a strange way of working itself out. The tale is titled, Murder Must Be Paid For. Be sure to be with us again next time when the sound of the great gong heralds another strange and exciting tale from The Sealed Book. The Sealed Book, written by Bob Arthur and David Cogan, is produced and directed by Jock McGregor. <laughs>